Hello and welcome to another episode of Not Alone Today podcast. My name is Joseph. And I am Anu. Welcome. Um, in this episode, today's episode is more or less a sequel to the previous episode, episode 12, in which we discussed um, how to undo sexual attraction during courtship. We got some interesting feedback on that particular episode and um, we thought we'd be considering that in, as, as another episode on its own just to kind of cover our bases. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one particular feedback about the fact that uh, we didn't exactly speak into um, the context of those who have been involved in many sexual escapades prior like people that are already fully sexually active might find the ideas and thoughts that we shared in the previous episode um not too realistic for them (laughs) in the manner of speaking like yeah we've been there done that seen it all so all these things that you're talking about um yeah sex is is definitely going to be viewed differently differently by someone that is experienced he or she, uh, as opposed to someone that is yet to be experienced in it. And so that's what we thought to speak into. Actually, we also got some feedback um, when we started to, where people started discussing about this on the Alive Mentorship Group. Mm. Um, and there are a couple of thoughts that were shared by two people that um, we'll just quickly talk about. Um, will you talk about Anita's response? Yeah, Anita shared how that fleeing like we said in the previous episode and just running away and taking your shoes along with you that she shared a very very um useful bible verse mm. from um, psalm 119 verse 9 it says wherewith thou shall a young man cleanse, cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word then the verse 11 says thy word have high heed in my heart that i might not sin against thee <laughs> So she feels countering sexual triggers should even be it should be double fold in this context, context yeah. if you've been sexually active. So that way you know that you know what your triggers are mm-hmm. and you're doubly running from them. So it's not just fleeing this time, it's just not not even being in that situation as much as you can. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Anita, for that thought. And Ugo Chuku gives um, yet another interesting thought along the same uh, or similar lines. From his own perspective, he's saying that um, he thinks people like that would need stiffer boundaries. Um, Just Mm. more or less the same thing Anita was saying. Uh, Because according to him, if you had prior sexual experiences, there is a kind of confidence you might have uh, when it comes to sex and trying to taste and see stuff. Um, not like smushing, but you know, <laughs> just actually engaging in, in head-on sexual discussions. And there's a likelihood that such people um, with prior experiences might feel confident about it and think that they are strong enough to hold themselves. Uh, but according to him, he would rather recommend that they should even have stiffer boundaries um, around around that, um, so yeah, those those are two um, interesting feedbacks that we got on that. Uh, so, but what would you say in addition to that to someone that is already like really sexually active? So, yes, we were saying. Uh, let, let me just recap what we said in the last episode. Yeah, we're saying that flee all appearances of evil. Mm-hmm. And I think, actually, it works in both contexts, Mm -hmm. whether you're a virgin or you're abstaining or you've been active, but this Mm -hmm. time you're saying, I'm keeping myself until marriage. It's how you take yourself. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, yeah, when the question was raised to say that we didn't approach, we didn't discuss, um, that what we're discussing does not relate with sexually active people. Mm -hmm. But what I thought was, if we are new creations Mm -hmm. all things are passed away and now we've become new Mm -hmm. so we didn't intentionally bound everybody into one group our discussion was based on faith we see ourselves all of us as Mm -hmm. one Mm -hmm. and all bible application applies to all of us as it is yeah despite our varied pasts past or or um, weaknesses or struggles is the same. The Bible says, "Flee all appearances of evil." So even if you've had sexual partners in the in the past, still flee all appearances of evil. 
now to bring it to context on how that would play out in different mm. situation is how is reason why we're doing this um podcast mm. and it brought to my mind one of the um i was reading genesis 38 today i'm not sure if it's 38 it, the story where joseph fled from potiphar's wife mm. and what struck me was he fled but left his robe mm-hmm. And because he left his robe, that got him into trouble. So in this context, I'll say, Mm -hmm. in your fleeing, flee very wisely. Don't leave your lipstick. Forgive my pawn, yeah, but do not forget your bags, bagging things. I know why I'm saying that. The reason is because sometimes we do flee, but lingering feelings bring us back. Mm. lingering feelings brings us back lingering thoughts mm. bring us back to the same situation we're fleeing from so it's a matter of time you can't continue fleeing and doing the same thing the same way every time mm. one day you just think nah I'm just tired of running I've got stitches in my back let's just get on with it mm. so flee wisely unlike Joseph please do take your robe because you might find yourself back in the same situation but when you flee give it a clean cut Mm. I'm not into this and that's it. That means no saying that this week you're saying, oh, I, I, I don't want you to talk to me. Please just go. Then the next week you're doing, oh, oh, I miss you. Can you come to my room now? And things like, I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to make us to see that life is a circle. Mm. There's a repetition of situations that happen to us, but it depends on how we approach it. If we flee all appearances of evil, mm. don't tempt yourself. You know how strong, like Anita Nogochukua said, Stifa Bondrins, you know how strong as you think you are, mm. that you've abstained for two years or three years doesn't make you superhuman because your body is used to that thing. You've already felt all the sensation. You know what to expect. Mm. That in itself, it's alluring. It would pull you to the situation even if you're trying to flee. Mm. But my thoughts, my advice would be that in your fleeing, give it a clean cut. It's not about putting your security in your relationship now. Put your security in God. Mm-hmm. And that alone will make you flee wisely. Take off your robe, pack up your bag, and just pull your bag to your chest, put your shoes on your head, and run. It's that deep. Yes, it's it's that deep because we are humans, aren't we, Kola? Absolutely. And once you develop a taste for a thing, mm-hmm. it's hard for you to abstain from the thing if you keep seeing the thing around you. Mm-hmm. Is it? consistent seeing that makes the triggers hard mm. to overcome mm. but if you say you're trying to overcome your chocolate um addiction addiction and in all your house there's nothing chocolatey for years you'll be able to abstain but surround yourself with packets of chocolate and say no god this day i'm going to put this chocolate on my table and i won't touch it by 12 p.m noon you've already finished half of the box mm. so do flee and Take out all the triggers you think would um, affect the the position you're trying to to um, attain. Mm. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Not to defend Joseph, but because my name is Joseph. <laughs> um, but of course, the circumstance of Joseph's story mm. is such that there is no other way he could have fled without leaving the road behind. Ah. But that's just on a lighter note. Um, I think for me, my worry is even the. <laughs> the unaddressed issue in that kind of um, context. Mm. Because I think for the person that is already sexually active Mm. and is now looking at marriage in view, Mm. it's not just about the person having stiffer boundaries. Mm. I would challenge such people to to be intentional about reclaiming the the sacredness of sex. Mm. Because the... The whole context of premarital sex, except in the context of being raped, Mm. is that you are all after pleasure. Mm. All after pleasuring yourself. Mm. You want it because of how it makes you feel. If you go into marriage with that thought about sex, with that understanding that sex is where you get your pleasure satisfied, Mm. you have laid a wrong premise for what sex would look like. Mm. 
I believe that sex is meant to be an act of worship. I, I believe that God created sex, of course, for the context of marriage, mm. in a way that two people can be so intimate in a way that glorifies God. Mm. It's so holy, it's so sacred, it's so sexy, it's so beautiful. But it's the full beauty of sex, I believe, is when um, these two people are coming into this naked and not ashamed status mm. but with an intentional desire to please the other and not yourself for people that have been engaged in premarital sex there is a very high likelihood that they've bought into the lie that sex is supposed to pleasure them mm. and that's that's why they keep going for it that's why they keep looking for it mm. um uh, but you need to reclaim that view, that biblical view of sex mm. that places sex not just as a tool for your pleasure, mm. but more as a tool for the pleasure of your partner so that you both worship God together. Um, uh, and the way to do that, I believe, would be to unlearn some things and relearn some things. So mm. you need resources. And one good resource I can point you to will mm. be the act of marriage yeah. by Tim and Beverly Lahaye. Um, again, for so, those that are already sexually active, it's not a big deal for you to pick it and read at almost any time in your courtship. On a normal day, I would recommend such a book to people that are getting closer and closer to their wedding mm. because it's not the kind of knowledge you just want to, to acquire without doing anything about. Mm. <laughs> the book is quite explicit when it comes to understanding sex. Another much smaller book but equally profound book on the beauty of sex is actually a book by a, a similar title i think it's titled the meaning of sex uh, by walter trubbish it's a very small book but i read this book years before our, our wedding and in one sitting i believe but it's just kind of it kind of opened my eyes to see that sex is much more than everything i've been fantasizing about mm. when i get married and there's this whole beautiful en emphasis on on that sacredness of it mm. and the fact that it is all about I want to please my partner and my partner wants to please me. In so a I, in a marriage setting, uh, of course, when I say partner, I mean your spouse. <laughs> I want to, to please my spouse. And she, of course, as someone under God, also wants to please me. When two people that are all out to please the other are in koinonia, in, 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 in fellowship, in that intimate kind of knowledge. Mm. There is nothing as beautiful. So I'm saying all of that because I know there are many Christian brothers and sisters that will still go ahead, get married. They were chased or, I mean, they used to be sexually active, but now they are chased and they get married. But they will never fully experience this beauty. I, it can be described mm. um, it's better experienced than described, but of mm. course the only way to experience it is to get into the right context for it and the right frame of mind. And mm. that's what I just thought I was I was going to speak into to say it's not just about you setting stiffer boundaries. Mm. You've tasted something that was meant for a different context outside of its context. Mm. You need to unlearn the errors of your desires mm. that led you into tasting it in the first instance mm. to reclaim it back into how it was the situation and context God intended for it so that you can fully enjoy the bliss mm. in it. Yes. Otherwise, it would just be an activity as it has mm. always been in your in your premarital sexual life. Mm. It's just sex. Hollywood has made it look so cheap. Mm. Uh, and yeah, it's just an act which you can choose to do whichever way you want to anyway. on your own terms. No, you continue to have sex on your own terms and you will never experience the bliss that God intended for sex to be or to give or mm. to to be about basically. So yeah, I think that's that's the thoughts I would just like to add to the context of those that are already sexually active and mm. still trying to live holy and godly <laughs> in the context of their courtship yes thank you for that that's very profound and yeah that's i think that's that's the, that's an episode done hmm. um in this sequel or in the next episode we'll be talking about another question that we've received hmm. but till then just remember you're not alone
today. God bless you. God bless you.